Hello, my name is Jenny Escobar and I'll be talking today um, about the case study of WorldCom and Cynthia Cooper. Um, my advice is going to be based on Immanuel Kant, um, Greg G. Breckett, and Cecil Burke. Um, I feel like all three of them had very in, um, insightful information, each on their own different categories. Um, my first piece of advice um, to give to Cynthia would be based on Immanuel Kant. Um, Immanuel Kant stated that the person shouldn't be quiet or should be loud because either way they would not be trusted. So what he meant by this was if the person was too quiet, then they wouldn't take that person serious because they were too quiet. And at the same time, if the person was too loud, then they would get suspicious because that person would be too loud. Um, I applied this advice to Cynthia um, in the sense that she would just have to be neutral about the situation. Um, she shouldn't trust all her co-workers and she shouldn't go out with this information and give it to the world. But at the same time, she shouldn't reserve it to herself. She should take it, you know, get her most trusted employees that she feels very confident with and share the knowledge so they could eventually help her um, on these findings. Um, um, Kant also had something called um, toitis, which is something that I feel like Cynthia should have looked out for. Um, these are people that usually um, look for information or try to get ahead by telling everything to the CEO. Um, that's how they get ahead in their job. And if they do find out and they do go to the CEO, this could potentially stop her from further findings that would eventually help her. Um, the second person would be George Breckin. Um, he stated that people did not have the same views, could still trust each other. So that means um, that if she had a coworker that maybe didn't feel exactly the way that she did, maybe they could have both agreed on something and they could um, help each other. Um, he also talks about basic trust, which is something that Cynthia was violated of. Um, she felt betrayed by the company. Um, she had worked in that company for many decades, and she felt very attached to the company um, because she started very young. Um, my advice to Cynthia would be to get a small group together of her closest co-workers to reduce other co-workers finding out about going to the CEO and um, to compile as much finding as possible to be able to present it to the Security Exchange Commission so they could go ahead and um, do something about this. Um, the next person that I talked about was Cecile, um, and she talks about, about the whistleblower, um, which is something that Cynthia was working her way towards doing. Um, my advice to Cynthia um, would be to think very carefully of what she wants to do, being the fact that if she does go through with the whistleblowing, she has to take into account her family, her friends, um, because it just wouldn't only affect her, it'll affect everybody around her, it'll affect her co-workers, many people would be laid off, the company could potentially be closed down, so she has to make sure that all her findings are correct, all her findings are accurate, and that everything is up to, up to date. Um, according to Cecile, um, she also has to see which one weighs more. Um, Cecile, Cecile talks about uh, professional loyalty, which is the loyalty to a company itself and the people in it. So she has to decide whether her loyalty lies with the CEO, the CFO of the company, the company as a whole, the people inside the company, you know, think about all the people that would get laid off and all of that, as I said earlier, or um, if her professional responsibility is more important. So meaning that, you know, she's been doing this for years. She thinks that this is very important to her. If she's sticking by the law and everything, you know, that all the books check off, which it sounds like she does because she did find out this information. So she must have done everything by the books. Um, and then she has to make sure that it's kept accurately. Um, another would be my advice to Cindy would be to know that if she goes through with the blue scene boy that she would have two options. She could either go public while still in the job and make sure that she has a lot of people backing her up because she would have to confront the CEO and it's the CEO's words against her which I believe in the article there was a situation like that when she did kind of confront it in a meeting. Um, he additionally did not say anything but then afterwards went in and that's when she felt fear for her for her job that she thought she was going to lose her job so she was already in the beginning experiencing this kind of information even before she started working on taking it um public um 
and then she has to or she has option b which is just to make sure that she has a job security so pretty much leave quietly get a stable job and then after all of that happens then go ahead with all the information and then go public um in conclusion whether cynthia um, decides to go forward with it or decides not to she has to understand that based after 2002 which is a good thing um, and it actually this um, act came out after Worldcon and many other companies were did the same um, fraud situation um, they came out with an act called the Savants Oakley Act what the Savants Oakley Act is um, it protects whistleblowers from being discriminated so kind of what was going to happen to Cynthia, it kind of protects people from being discriminated. Um, it, it stops companies if they do want to stay in that company and the company does not close down. It stops them from them being fired or from them being sued. And then there's also another section, which is section 4.1, um, which states that they must present all materials of, balance sheet, uh, of the balance sheet. This is something that happened in WorldCom where um, they moved, um, I believe it was $400 million to another account just to make up if the business did fall. It was in what they claimed it was for if the business did fall or had a low year, but there was also finding that they were moving some of those funds offshore. Um, so it was that law is just to make sure that there is no um, fraudulent movement and that all the books are in record and that everything is kept up to date. And then Lastly, um, is section 8.802, I'm sorry, of the Sovereign Oxyla, which states that no one should destroy, falsify, or make false entries on the books. This applied to the, uh, the CFO of the company, of Worldcom, and then two of the employees, which they went ahead and signed off and said that it was okay to move those funds. So this law is made so they could be, be accounted responsible for their actions. Also... Um, when they did confront these individuals, they said that they had nothing to do, that they didn't know what they were actually finding. Um, in conclusion, I think that these were all emission rules that were made to protect businesses. And I also believe that Cynthia has the law behind her if she did want to go public with this information. But at the same time, she does need to take way in if it's worth it for her and her family. Or if it's something that, you know, she wants to go through it at the end because it's her choice and it's a really big um, responsibility. But in my opinion, I feel like she would go through with it. And that is it. Thank you so much.